Hi, I'm Jason Garber for ThatShelf.com, and we're here to look at Vile Me Please's Philadelphia International box set. Big change. So those of you uh, must be aware from lots of uh, videos on this channel and lots of discussion um, all over the place, Vile Me Please is a subscription service. Um, they have multiple streams whereby people sort of pay X amount of money um, and every month you sort of get a record in the mail. Um, there's a, a classic stream, there's an essential stream, there's a hip-hop stream, there's a country stream now. They also go ahead and do a bunch of box sets. We've looked at the um, Herbie Hancock set, there's the Women of Motown set, um, there's a bunch of others. The Quincy Jones set just came out. Um, I was a bit disappointed by some of the selections. I sort of appreciate some of the stuff they did on it, but others um, were either absent or records that I already had decent quality um, productions of. But one that um, I was sort of trepidatious about, but I sort of increasingly realized it was something I was really going to want, is the Philadelphia International box. I mean, so as they say, lost sounds found. Now, here's, here's the actual shipping box that comes from VMP. This is how, like, literally my, right here is where my name sticker was put on and you can see what happens when the stuff actually gets mailed this big punch that's through here you know it it, it, it is an outer box and so it means that inside the vinyl is fine but you know as one of those neurotic things is like you like boxes and boxes like some sort of weird sort of japanese horror movie um uh so that's what you get when, when you're schlepping something internationally through two courier systems um you're going to get a little bit of things punching through i'm hoping inside everything is fine um it's actually only secured on the front uh with two little pieces of tape so let's just open these up and see what it looks like inside i got a slightly less terrible knife to work with this time so as I open it up, the get down with the Philly sound uh, on the tape. Get down, let's see if you can read that. Get down with the Philly sound. Inside this, as things are rattling around, we have Sound of Philadelphia sticker. Sweet. There we are. TSOP sticker. Gotta love it. Maybe I'll put this on my car. Eh, probably not. Um, you then have... The story of Philadelphia International Records, Dear Soul Searcher, with a sort of a breakdown of what is Welcome to the 11th edition of a VMP Anthology, uh, the story of Philadelphia International Records. This is their 11th box set. It's part of the anthology series. Good God. Um, I mean, there was the Grateful Dead one that uh, a lot of people were super excited with. I was less so. Um, there's There's been some pretty uh, amazing things that have come out with this. And the hopes for this is that... Um, this is going to be a very good sounding one. You will notice, as it says on this here, that each record in this box comes in exclusive color vinyl. So I, I think that what we're doing is that this is a box set collection of things that are going to be re-released by um, the record company anyway, but we get it in a nice little box and it's on exclusive colored vinyl. Um, but this is a big deal. It's uh, AAA, so analog mastered by Bernie Grunman and the team at Bernie Grunman. It played it and pressed at RTI. It's actually... Um, press at RTI, which is actually kind of a big deal. Um, the Quincy Jones and actually the, um, uh, the Herbie Hancock was not pressed at RTI. I believe it was plated there, but pressed, um, in, uh, Czech Republic, which, you know, sometimes has great results and sometimes doesn't like all vinyl. So inside here you have, you know, nicely secured that the punch through hopefully didn't damage the back of the box. But as I lift it up, there we go. In foam. The story of Philadelphia records get down with the Philly sound. As I lift this out, you can see, yes, the punch went all the way through on the side, but there was enough space that it didn't damage the box on the back. So really nice foil on the back here. The PI logo of Philly International. Now the history of Philadelphia International is pretty fascinating. It's actually um, a part of essentially, for lack of a better word, soul music, that I'm less of a fan of than the stuff that came just before. I'm a huge fan of Stax Motown, the sort of 60 to 71, 72 stuff. Right when, essentially, all music was fundamentally changing um, uh, uh, in, in pretty phenomenal ways, 
um, you saw a lot of particularly African-American music go much more influenced by essentially club music, that they took some of the density of the Sly and the Family Stone and James Brown and those elements um, and incorporated a lot of syrupy and sweeping string moments. Um, all the progenitors um, that actually ended up um, incorporated into this sort of, you know, um, sort of quiet soul and disco, the, both of these things colliding at once. There are moments that I absolutely adore from this era, of course, and I'm, I, I really think that this is a really nice um, uh, overview and will give me a really nice taste of it. Um, but I gotta say, I'm much bigger fan of, say, 68 to 72 than I am from 73 to 77 even though within that there are some absolutely moments of extraordinary um, musicianship and complexity of songwriting and all the other elements. Philly sound really was um, as big of a deal to the changing sound of soul music and, frankly, popular music through the 1970s as much as anything that took place in Detroit in the 60s. Um, uh, uh, Gamble and Huff, so many um, amazing, talented people. And I gotta admit, so much of this sound for me came directly not only from um, the influence that had on disco, but also from uh, Holland Oates. Um, and the fact that Holland Oates took that sound and made it a much more popular element through the 1980s, uh, uh, looking backwards, sort of my, I was too young in the 70s to hear it sort of the first hand other than the really giant pop hits, but it was sort of in the 80s looking back to the 70s and the first time I heard about so much of the stuff that actually takes place in this box set was actually retroactive, just a decade or, uh, later from a bunch of people that were fully incorporated into the sort of MTV aesthetic, but looking back at the stuff that Philadelphia International did. Um, also, if you look at the stuff that um, with Tom Bell that Elton John did, you had, uh, you had so many people all over the world, David Bowie, um, uh, people coming here in the same way in the 1960s you had Rolling Stones going to places like Chess to record. You suddenly saw in the 70s that this place of Philadelphia really was the home for a very particular sound that absolutely caused um, a sensation, a global sensation, as simple as that. So let's open this up as carefully as we can. This is another of the beautiful box sets that our friends at VMP put together. Look, so much of the stuff. Yes, I could have bought many of these records sort of individually. There's a couple of them that I probably never would have bought uh, on its own. But what I love about VMP as somebody who's like a rabbit collector is it gives me that sense of curation. I mean, Christ, I'm a critic. It's one of the things I like to do um, is, is encourage people to sort of um, to listen to me as I generate a list of what to watch. To, uh, watch. Um, but when it comes to this stuff, it's like I can, in sort of one fell swoop, um, get a really nice, essentially, audio documentary um, of, of Philadelphia International um, uh, with, with uh, relevant uh, recordings. There is a series of podcasts that um, are associated with it, though they're actually pretty well produced, certainly much better than they were um, at the outset when they're really rough. They certainly are a lot more professional. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but on the inside, it's actually printed on the inside, which is actually really lovely. Um, and here we have, yeah. So, so this gorgeous set with the story of Philly International. Now you saw the little, um, uh, the little cardboard uh, bit that comes. There is a full booklet. Let's try to do this this way. There is a full booklet inside, showcasing again that stunning '70s logo. And all of these elements, all here, showcasing this really nice, telling the story of this era of music. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I cannot wait to dig into this. A bunch of this is not, is going to be very new to me. Um, uh, the, the, the Backstabbers record uh, is going to be outrageous for me to actually dig into the, the album tracks on this. Um, again, a really nice uh, um, way into, into that story. Billy Paul, who, and it's so funny, when I lived in Europe in the mid-90s, uh, me and Mrs. Jones was just everywhere, randomly. And it was this, and I think it was touring through Europe, and it was just on the radio, back when we were listening to radio, like, 
50 times a day and I could not understand why this song had suddenly been as big of a hit as anything else that was playing on radio. I still don't have a really good answer. It must have been in a movie or a commercial or something. So like when Pink Moon suddenly became a hit after being a Volkswagen commercial. Um, MFSB, we're going to get a taste of that, which is awesome. Um, Three Degrees. Uh, I know so little about this band, but what I've heard is just completely up my alley. And again, I think we're getting a lot more of the stuff, like, it's just, it's clear that this is curated for somebody like me. Um, in other words, not, um, a lot of these are big records, but they're also really deep and really intensely, um, uh, uh, excellent. It's as simple as that and really give a semblance of what we're here to expect. This is the one I'm most looking forward to. I've actually randomly been listening to this, um, uh, Harold Melvin and Blue Notes, uh, album anyway. Uh, Don't Leave Me This Way is just fucking amazing and and there's just so much great stuff in this record that i can't wait to uh enjoy this dexter wansel life on mars i know nothing about literally absolutely nothing about um that record and then the philadelphia international all-star let's clean up the keto god bless um oh what a great photo and then uh yeah leon huff um here to create music Astonishing to know the time Leon Huff made his only solo record in uh, 1980 it was only 37. Ridiculous. There's uh, Huff of uh, Gamble and Huff fame. Um, uh, Neela Orr put the um, things together. Um, and then again, we have that beautiful, beautiful logo. So in the set, as we pull it out, as we're describing what's in the book, let's look at it this way. We have... Ooh. Actually, liner notes, essentially lyric notes outside the box sets. So these these are sort of associated, just like separately put in in the front rather than put in the record. I'm not quite sure why they did that, but I'm sure they have a reason rather than tucking them in. It might have been after the fact and it was easier to do it that way. So here we are, 360 Degrees of Billy Paul with me, Mrs. Jones on the cover. Beautiful tip on jackets. Um, God bless Stoughton. Um, VMP Anthology um, put foil stamped on the back. Uh, I don't know if these are numbered. I haven't, I should probably dig in, but somewhere it might actually be numbered on the box. I keep losing that. I tend to not care. But nonetheless, um, I believe this is numbered limited edition. I know it's limited edition. But there we are, 360 of Blade Paul. Um, I'm very interested to see what takes place. Now, it's in a paper sleeve that is still plastic lined. So I'm less annoyed. It'll definitely um, be extruded from here as it were and put into a, a MoFi or a um, Vinyl Mix Solutions um, uh, sleeve. No dish warping, no weirdness. Beautiful pressing as we've come to expect from RTI. And a really nice color for this one. So. You know, there's something to be said about a 360 record, uh, record titled 360 as it spins 360 degrees on your turntable. What's not to like about that? Um, there's the De Dexter Wansel Life on Mars album. Again, prophet named KG, Life on Mars. Uh, together once again, Stargazer, one million miles from the ground. You can be what you want to be. Theme for the planets and rings of Saturn. I am super excited about this. I know nothing about this record, yet there's enough on here. As soon as it says all keyboards, ARP synthesizers, and lead vocals by Dexter Wansel, the fact that this is going to be like a weird space trippy um, ARP awesomeness, I am very excited to hear what it is. Uh, Kenny Gamble um, uh, writing the uh, notes on the back. Let's see what trippy color they did for this. Uh, also a very sort of translucent sea foam i guess it is beautiful and again get down with a philly sound you actually see them and on the cover there is a bunch of stuff that we're actually going to be uh sort of diving into so um uh, original versions of that kind of inner sleeves this is the one as i said i'm super super excited for so wake up everybody killer track keep on loving you you know how to make me feel so good don't leave me this way again rid my gamble and huff um one of my favorite songs of the era period. And I knew 
the sort of main version. I didn't realize that it was a cover of this um, uh, version. They're both so freaking extraordinary. Killer bass line. Just absolutely astonishing. To the world how I feel about Cha Baby. Uh, to be free is to be who we are and I'm searching for love. This is a phenomenal record and I've actually been looking for a really good copy of it for a long time. Uh, so the fact that I'm basically getting a mint triple A um, thing right out of box set this was worth, in some ways, the purchase price for me. And again, really nice. What do we want to call this? It's sort of a turquoise, but yeah, I don't know what the heck you want to call this. Greenish blue, um, uh, very Miami Vicey color uh, on Wake Up Everybody. The stellar, stellar track by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Um, just absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to dig into this. This is going to be freaking great. Um, there's the Leon Huff record. Sort of, sort of weird non-chronological order here. Um, here to create music. Um, super, again, excited to see. Recorded at Sigma Sound Studios, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Recording hits in 68. Um, right on the back, uh, this fine illustration of this record. Again. This one, a real cool orange. So this is an opaque orange with a little bit of texturing inside it. Sort of orange with a little bit of uh, tiny bits of um, uh, coloration actually to uh, uh, make it look even more impressive. The MFSB Love is the Message. I believe I have a copy of this somewhere, but it's no doubt beat to hell. Um, uh, the creator shines the light of creativity on the group known to us of MSFSB, mother, fa father, son, brother. Sorry, excuse me. M mother, father, sister, brother. It has become necessary to single out the group of young men and women who make the Philadelphia sound. In this album, you can hear the influences made by known by the sister brother of love. So it's basically um, the, the Funk Brothers, the backing band uh, elements um, from the Philly sound. Super wild that they get it. Um, and side, side 2 actually has right there the track TSOP, The Sound of Philadelphia, the theme from the television show Soul Train on this record. Absolutely killer. Killer, killer, killer record. Um, once again, what a sort of translucent sort of a wine gum color. It probably looks a little bit more red on camera, but in person, this is definitely leaning towards the burgundy. Absolutely lovely. Cannot wait. I mean, so far, these just look phenomenal. Um, OJ's Backstabbers. <laughs> uh, phenomenal, phenomenal group. Um, there's going to be stuff on this record that I've just never heard. And it's going to be l brand new for me, which I totally adore. They, they do, uh, you know, they, they do love trade on here. Um, uh, just great, great, great stuff. Incredible uh, band. Um, incredible vocalists. Cannot wait to dive into this. That's an interesting sort of gold chocolatey nougat kind of thing because why not it's like a gold record by the ojs as well it should be still more it's all included in this crazy box set so there we are the cover as indicated the let's clean up the ghetto um <laughs> Uh, Lou Rawl, Trade Wins, Philadelphia International All-Stars, D.D. Sharp Gamble, I didn't realize this was um, uh, a compilation. Uh, Teddy Benegrass, of course, Teddy, um, as per uh, other inclusions. Three Degrees, OJ's, Billy Paul, Archie Bell and the Drells, Old People, Intruders, and another track by um, Harold Mevin, the Blue Notes, doing Everybody's Talking, um, the Fred Neal song from, um, uh, <laughs> what was it, uh, Midnight Cowboy. Um, yeah, uh, super, super freakishly wild cannot wait to dig into this as well i know i'm repeating myself but why not this stuff just looks amazing it's as simple as that and this again transparent blue i love when you go to rec these um whenever you see these sort of behind the scenes and stuff like a uh, cure peer um rti you see these walls of all the variations that they have with the colored vinyl colored vinyl used to be kind of terrible um the quality was um, really rough back in the day um they just didn't get the uh, engineering right uh and now um, oftentimes because of the sort of smaller print runs you find with some colors, uh, vinyl actually sounds a hell of a lot better than black vinyl. Not always, but sometimes. Okay. And then what we have here, we have 
<laughs> the three degrees of just making sure it's the right way. And it actually opens up as this wild gate fold. So this is the front. This is the back, upside down, as it were. Uh, but it opens up to this center fold. As you can hear the crack. Here we go. Three degrees, indeed. It's so cold, it's hot. And let's see what this guy looks like. Transparent orange. Stunning. So there we go. I got a lot of music to listen to now. Um, I am super, super excited. I'm super excited that um, VMP decided to do this. Yeah, I don't see anywhere where it would actually be listed um, the number. If it is numbered, I will find it at some point in time. I'll leave it something in the comments. You can let me know in the comments where to look for it. But on a first unboxing, I don't really care. Um, fact of the matter is that I got so much music here to actually dive into, which is new for me, but somebody has taken the time to actually sort of present as here's the story of something that you've always wanted to know about. I am super excited to dive in. For ThatShelf.com, I'm Jason Gorber. Please let us know in the comments what you think of this release or other VMP releases or other vinyl releases you'd like to see us take a look at. Please subscribe, follow us on social media, like, engage, do all this stuff. It actually really does help the channel out a lot. It really means a lot that you've uh, stuck around and uh, supported us and watched this video. We will see you next time. All the best. Take care.